Dear students, in this video, we are going to learn about the concept of process synchronization in operating system. The contents of this video is introduction of process synchronization, producer consumer problem, how the data inconsistency occurs in the producer consumer problem, what are the various solutions for the critical section problem. These are the contents of the process synchronization in today's video. Generally, processes execute concurrently. So, more than one process execute in the system concurrently. When the processes execute concurrently, they may access the shared data. That might result in consistency. So, that means if X is a common variable shared by two processes, when process P1 and process P2 try to modify the contents of the shared variable X, this might result the inconsistency in the final resulted value of the x. So, this needs to be taken care. So, we need certain mechanism in order to ensure that these cooperating processes will perform the execution of the statements in such a way that the final outcome of those statements is equivalent to the execution of the statements in the orderly fashion. So, that is the requirement in the process synchronization. Now, let us examine the process synchronization with the help of one example that is producer consumer problem. In producer consumer problem, the processes producer and consumer makes use of a common variable that is counter. This counter is initially zero and the producer always increment the counter variable and consumer always decrement the counter variable when it consumes the data from the buffer. So, that means producer increments the counter value when he produces the element into the buffer. Consumer decrements the counter variable when he consumes one element from the buffer. In that way, both producer and consumer make use of the shared variable that is counter. So, now let us see the code snippet for the producer. This is a this is a uh, while loop that repeats for a indefinite number of times. Initially, the counter value will be zero. Initially, the counter value is zero. Producer produces an element, and consumer consumes an element from the buffer. So there is a buffer. Buffer is nothing but like we can imagine like it is an array of some size size so buffer is nothing but an array of some size n or buffer size so initially the counter value is zero so producer wants to produce the element then what he does he he will check the counter value whether the counter has reached the maximum size of the buffer so, initially counter is 0, therefore this condition fails. So, producer produces an element. So, what he does, he produces an element into the buffer which is indexed with the help of a variable called in. So, in is initially initialized to 0, that means the next element is produced into the location that is 0. So, in this location, the value is produced by the producer. Assume that the value is 1. Now, this index is incremented. So, as to facilitate to hold the next element produced by the producer. And uh, since one element is produced by the producer, so the counter value is incremented. So, counter will be become 1. So, like that, when producer produces the next element, so, it will store the element in the next location pointed by in and then the in variable, the in is an index, it is incremented to the next free location. Like that, the in will be incremented from 0 to last location and it will be incremented in the rotation basis, rotation order. That is, the formula for increment, incrementing the in variable is in plus 
one percentage buffer size. That is in plus one mod buffer size. So, for example, when in reaches the last location, then what happens? The next when when producer wants to produce the next element, then in in should rotate and point to the first element in the buffer. That is, it is like a circular linked list order. The elements are to be produced by the producer. So now assume that consumer wants to consume the contents from the buffer. So assume that there are two elements are there in the buffer. So two elements one and two. These are the elements produced by the producer. The current location of in that is the index used by the producer is here. And the current location for the consumer is out. Consumer make use of the index variable for the buffer access. It is out. So out is the index variable used by the consumer. So the first element is consumed by the consumer, and the out variable is incremented. So from zero, out will be pointing to the next element in the buffer so since the one element is consumed by the consumer the counter value is decremented so what is the counter value it is two previously because two elements are produced by the producer so the counter is two now so counter is decremented by the consumer so two minus one it becomes one Likewise, the consumer will be keep on consuming the element. Initially, the consumer checks whether there are at least one element is in the buffer. If counter is equal to zero, this indicates that there are no elements produced by the producer. So, uh, consumer will be keep doing nothing. If at least one element is in the buffer, the counter value is not zero. Then Control comes to the next statement. The consumer will consume the element from the buffer, which is pointed by the index variable out. And from that index pointed location, the consumer will take the element, and then the pointer is get incremented on circular fashion. That is, out is equal to out plus one mod buffer size. That means the value of the out will start from zero. And it keeps on increasing one, two, three. Once it reaches to the last location in the buffer, the counter, that is the out variable, will become zero again. So in that way, the out index will be altered by the consumer program. And every time consumer consumes an element, he decrements the content of the counter. So these these are the programs of producer and consumer. The common factor here is both producer and consumer is making use of the common variable that is counter. So producer is incrementing the counter variable, consumer is decrementing the counter variable. So there occurs some data inconsistency if these increment and decrementing of the counter variables are not handled in a proper way. There occurs some data inconsistency. Let us look into what is such data inconsistency. Incrementing the counter by the producer is done with the steps like this internally by the CPU. So the count contents of the counter is taken into the register and the register gets incremented and the incremented value from the register will be copied back to the counter. So these are the operations carried out by the CPU when an increment operation is performed by the producer. Similarly, the decrement operation is done by the consumer. The decrement operation is carried out by the CPU by following these instructions. That is, the value of the counter is taken into a register. The register contents are decremented. Then, the contents of register is taken back into the counter. So, likewise, the these are the CPU performed instructions internally for decrementing of counter variable. Now let us see the execution sequence of these statements 
one after the another in the interleaving fashion. Assume that the producer's first statement, that is the counter value, is taken into the register 1. Assume that the initial value of the counter is 5. Initial value of the counter is 5. 5 is copied into the register 1. So, register 1 contains 5. Similarly, the register 1 contents are incremented. So, 5 plus 1, it becomes 6. That means the contents of the register 1 is 6 now. Then what is happening in the uh, consumer side? The contents of the counter is taken by the register 2. So, counter initial value of the counter is 5. Both the producer and consumer is taking the value of the count at the same time initially. The value of the counter is stored in the register R2. Now, register 2 contents are decremented. It becomes 4. Then, producer, the contents of register 1 is copied into the counter variable. So, counter variable value will become 6 now. Then the next statement in the consumer that is copying the contents of register 2 into the counter is done. So, the value of the register 2 is 4. 4 is copied into the counter. So, that means after executing these statements in the interleaving order, the final value of the counter is 4. But the correct value of the counter is 5 because initially the value of the counter is 5. One element is produced by the producer. It becomes 6. Now, one element is consumed by the consumer. So, 6 minus 1, it is 5. So, at the end of the execution of these two statements, counter plus plus, counter minus minus, the resultant of the counter value should be 5. But the result of the counter value has become 4 because of the interleaving execution of the statements from both the producer and consumer processes. This leads to the data inconsistency. This is an example for data inconsistency from the producer and consumer problem. So, when more than one process is trying to access the same resource, then this results a race condition. The resultant of the race condition is data inconsistency. We need to handle this race condition with some mechanism such that the final outcome of the execution should be equal to the execution when it carries sequentially. So, this is called critical section problem. Critical section is nothing but the segment of the code. Those segments of the code that make use of the common variables and the common tables or files by the processors is considered as critical section code. When one process is executing the statements of that code, no other process is allowed to execute those critical section segment code. So, this is the requirement to handle this race condition in process synchronization. Critical section problem is to design a protocol to solve this data inconsistency problem in the process synchronization. Here the objective of the critical section problem is every process must ask permission to enter into the critical section in the entry section. And after performing the execution in the critical section, it exit from the critical section and then it will execute the statements in the remainder section of the process. So, what is mean by this critical section and remainder section? That means those statements having the common variables, common resources by multiple processes, they are called as critical section. 
so those processes which do not have any common resources is assumed to be in the remainder section when the process wants to enter into the critical section it should acquire the permission and then enter into the critical section perform the execution of the statements then release the critical section permissions and then and execute the statements in the remainder section this is the procedure to be followed by any process for executing the statements in the critical section so that means the process code is divided into two parts one is the code segment that has shared variables the code segment that do not have shared variables so when it when wants to enter into the critical section it should acquire the permission for executing the statements in the critical section then after completing the execution it should re release the permission and then come out of the critical section there is no need to acquire any permission for executing the statements in the remainder section now let us examine how this critical section problem is dealt with the help of one algorithm here pi is one process that wants to enter into the critical section there is another process called pj which is also wants to enter into the critical section now there is one control variable called turn this control variable determine which process will enter into the critical section initially the value of the turn is i this indicates that this is the turn for process i to enter into the critical section the initial value of the turn is i now the process pi is checking whether is it a turn for j but the turn is initially defined as i so this condition fails for i the while condition will not execute for pi the process is permitted to enter into the critical section so process will perform the execution in the critical section at this point of time process j is verifying the entry permission for entering into the critical section what is the value of the turn it is i now now process j is checking the permission for entering into the critical section so this is the code segment for process j the first statement in the process j is it is verifying whether the turn is for i or turn is for j now the value of the turn is as we discussed in the previous slide the turn value is i that is i is in the critical section already so when this turn is equal to i this indicates that this condition becomes true for the pro process j when this condition is true it it is a self repeating while loop this loop will repeat for pj again the turn for the turn variable value is i like as uh, as and when the turn value becomes j then only this while loop will become false for process j until the process i is in the critical section the turn value will be remains i turn value remains i when the process completes its execution it comes out from the critical section as soon as process i come out of the critical section it changes the value of the turn from i to j now the value of the turn is j so what happens process i continue into the remainder section and process j which is hold in this while loop it becomes false the condition in the while loop will becomes false because the turn value is changed from i to j now turn is j so this condition is false and the while loop breaks and the process j is entering into the critical section as soon as the process j completes its critical section then it will again change the value of the turn as i likewise when process i completes its critical section 
execution it is changing the value of the turn to j as soon as the process j completes its execution in the critical section it is turning the value of I, j to i likewise these two processes mutually execute one after the another into the critical section by making use of this turn variable in that way process j after completing its execution in the critical section it changes the turn variable to i and then process j will enter into the critical remainder section in the meanwhile process j process i after completing its remainder section now it wants to enter into the critical section so when turn is for j the condition for i in the while loop will become true so while statement will become executed for process i then the process i will be blocked in the while loop until the this turn will become equal to i as soon as the process j comes out of the critical section the value of the turn becomes i so now turn becomes i here so when turn becomes i the condition fails then process i enter into the critical section in that way both the processes execute one after the another in the critical section when we want to provide a solution to the critical section problem the algorithm must process these three properties the algorithm must hold mutual exclusion property algorithm must hold pro progress and algorithm must hold bounded waiting condition all the three properties the solution to the critical section problem must possess what is this mutual exclusion according to mutual exclusion if one process is in the critical section no other process is permitted to enter into the critical section so that is mutual exclusion so in the previous processes process i and process j when pi is in the critical section process j is blocked in the while loop when process j is in the critical section then process i will be blocked in the while loop so that means only one process is executing their statements in the critical section at a time so therefore the mutual exclusion condition is hold here now coming to the progress progress indicates that if no process is executing in the critical section if some process wants to enter into the critical section then the selection of that process will not be postponed this process should be immediately permitted to enter into the critical section and the decision should not be postponed indefinitely that is the meaning of the progress if one process is wanted to enter into the critical section and no other process is in the critical section then this process must be permitted immediately and the decision should not be postponed indefinitely that is the meaning of progress what is mean by bounded waiting so a bound must exist on the number of times that other processes are allowed to enter into the critical section before the requested process enter into the critical section that means in the previous example once process i completes its execution it is giving the chance for process j process i again not entering into the critical section it is giving the chance for process j similarly process j after completing its execution in the critical section it is giving the chance for process i likewise process i knows that after completing j it will get the turn similarly process j also knows that after completion of process i j will get its turn this is the meaning of the bounded waiting so every process knows exactly when it will get its turn for entering into the critical section that is called as bounded waiting that means the number of times the other processes are allowed it to enter into the critical section 
before the requested process is granted permission to enter into the critical section is the meaning of bounded waiting. The critical section solutions can be handled in two ways. One is preemptive, another one is non-preemptive. Preemptive allows the preemption of the process when running in the kernel mode. Non-preemptive do not preempt the processes. It will allow the process to enter and continue its execution and wait until the process voluntarily releases the CPU. Though the process is not forcibly terminated. In preemptive, the process is forcibly terminated to release the CPU or any other resource. Non preemptive process will not be forced to release the resources. Process is permitted to continue its execution and the process can release the voluntarily whatever resources like CPU and other resources voluntarily. Another solution for the critical section problem that is Peterson solution. In this Peterson solution, there are two control variables are used. One is turn that defines which process to enter into the critical section. Another is flag that specifies whether the process is ready to enter into the critical section or not. Turn is to define which process to enter. Flag is to define whether the process is ready to enter the critical section or not. So this condition, this uh, parameter is not taken into account in the previous example. If I completes, it is giving the turn for J. If J completes, it is giving the turn for I. So they, they are not bothered whether they are really, the other process is really willing or ready to enter in the critical section or not. It is giving the chance to the other process. So in order to eliminate that, in order to avoid that kind of situation, the Peterson is introducing another parameter that is called as a flag variable. This flag variable indicates whether the process is interested to enter into the critical section or ready to enter into the critical section. So that is the meaning of the flag variable. Now let us see the algorithm for process i. Process i wants to enter into the critical section. So therefore the flag variable for i is true. And uh, it is giving the turn, that is turn variable is marked as j. That means i is checking whether j is interested or not. And uh, while condition for process i is verifying the value of the flag variable for j and whether the turn is for j or not. So what is the flag variable of j? Now let us check the process j code. Process J also wants to enter into the critical section. So the flag variable value for process J is true. Now, what process J is doing? It is giving the turn for I. So that means the turn variable value previously it is J assigned by process I. This J value is modified to I, changed to I. So therefore, the value of turn is now i. The value of turn is now i. What happens this condition while loop? The turn for the flag value for j is true. Yes, flag value of j is true. Process j wants to enter into the critical section. But what is the condition for turn? Value of the turn? Turn is i. But if the condition is turn is equal to j, then this while loop will true and true will become true. But here turn is equal to i. That means this statement turn is equal to j is false here. The true and false, the output is the unconditioned, it is, it fails. So while loop terminates. What happens? Process i enter into the critical section when while loop is terminated. That means the while loop will act like an entry permission for process i. 
similarly the while statement in this process j also behaves like an entry condition for critical section for process j now process j wants to enter into the critical section the value of the flag i is true because process i wants to enter into the critical section it is already i the already it is true so flag value of i is true and what is the turn for turn it is i that is turn value of i is the turn value turn variable value is i flag of i is true and turn variable value also i so therefore true and true this condition will become true in the while loop and this while loop is blocked that means the this while loop blocks the process j to execute the next statement because this while loop becomes true and this while loop again repeats like this the while loop keeps repeating until either the flag vari va variable value or turn variable value is changed in the meanwhile process i while it is executing the statements in the critical section completes then it will come out when it comes out the flag variable value of i will become false because it don't want to enter into the critical section the flag value of the i variable becomes false when it becomes false automatically the while statement in the process j terminates this becomes false false and true is false therefore while loop terminates for process j now process j enter into the critical section so what is happening in the process i process i will go to the remainder section so process i continue its execution in the remainder section process j will continue its execution in the critical section as soon as the process j completes its execution it will check it will change the flag variable for j as false it changes the flag value of j to false then enter into the remainder section in the process again again process i wants to enter into the critical section then what happens it will change the value of the flag variable value for i as true for i it is true so therefore under turn whose turn it is turn also turn also i turn value is also i so therefore this this is true and this is also true flag is false that is flag of j is false this is false and turn turn is i this is also false so see this while condition fails this while condition fails and the process i enter into the critical section in that way process i enter into the critical section after the completion of process j process j enter into the critical section after process i come out of the critical section like that both the processes mutually agree with each other to execute their code in the critical section one after the another so therefore all the three conditions like mutual exclusion is hold good here because when pi is in the critical section pj will not be permitted to enter into the critical section when pj is in the critical section process i is not permitted to enter into the critical section so therefore mutual exclusion condition is satisfied here what about progress progress is the property that when one process wants to enter into the critical section when no other process is in the critical section the permission for that process is immediately granted so pi when it wants to enter into the critical section and when pj is not in the critical section then pi is immediately permitted similarly j also permitted when i is not in the critical section so this is called progress similarly the third condition that is bounded waiting so 
when pi completes pj is getting the chance for entering into the critical section when pj completes pi is getting the chance for entering into the critical section so therefore there is a bounded waiting time for either process i or for process j so therefore so every process know when it exactly get the entry permission for critical section so therefore all the three properties are hold good for this peterson solution so these are the two methods for accessing and these are all the two solutions for handling the critical section problem thank you for watching this video